Hi, welcome to the Electric Service Center. My name is Callan, a product assistant here at Electric eBikes. And today in our temporary workshop, we're gonna be showing you how to unbox, set up, and go on your first ride on your new XP trike. First, we're gonna need a few tools. For this, you'll need isopropyl alcohol, a clean rag, an eight millimeter Allen wrench, five millimeter Allen wrench, a three millimeter Allen wrench, and a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. A set of side cutters, a 15 millimeter socket, a five millimeter socket, and an eight millimeter socket. You'll also need a 14 millimeter socket. You'll want the corresponding torque wrenches that are referenced in your user's manual. Finally, you'll need an air pump. Your XP trike is gonna be 83 pounds in box. That being said, we recommend grabbing another set of hands to help you bring your trike to where you're gonna be unboxing. Use the handles on either side of the box. Thanks, Tony. To start the unboxing process, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your box is in the correct orientation. You'll be able to figure this out by seeing the arrows on the side of the box pointing up. To start unboxing, you're gonna to wanna to remove the six white clips located near the bottom of your box. To remove them, you'll pinch the bottom portions, pull out the lever, and remove the clip. Once all six clips are removed, it'll free up the top of the box. Once free, grab a friend to help you remove the top. At this point, you'll also find the charger located near the top of the box. You're gonna to wanna to remove this and save it for later. You can now remove the large insert and any unattached accessories you might find. This might vary depending on which package you've received. Visit help.electricebikes.com for a whole comprehensive guide on how to install each accessory. You can then remove this large triangle insert. Now that our inserts are removed, we can grab our friend again Lifting up on the bike, taking it out of the box. Thanks, Tony. You can also note that we have this large cardboard cube at the bottom. This is gonna help keep your bike level during the unboxing process. Now that your bike is out of the box, we can grab our side cutters and start cutting the white zip ties holding on your styrofoam. If you find a black zip tie holding cables together, make sure not to cut those. Now that we've removed our zip ties, you can start to take off the foam packaging on the rest of the bike. Note, you may also find foam pieces underneath the fenders. Make sure to remove these so your bike spins freely later on. When removing the styrofoam, make sure not to remove the yellow tags. We'll go over these later. Next, before we unfold our bike, we're gonna to wanna to insert our stem. You're gonna to wanna to unfold the stem, lock it into place, grab your handlebars, undo the collar to loosen it up, and insert our stem past the minimum insertion point. We can then lock it back down and worry about sizing later. Once your handlebar and stem is installed, we can then move to unfold the bike. This will be easiest done by rocking the back to get the weight off and swinging the bike forward. You'll then close your frame latch. Now that our bike is standing on its own, you can take your side cutters and remove the cardboard block on the bottom of the bike. Make sure to grab the black disc as well. You can now locate the serial number 
on the front of your head tube. This is going to be stamped into the actual frame. We recommend keeping this for your own records as well as registering it on bikeindex.org in the event that your bike is lost or stolen. On the bike you'll find several yellow safety labels. Each label will have safety information about your bike. Make sure to familiarize yourself with each label before removing them. On each yellow safety tag, you'll also find a QR code. This QR code, once scanned, will then take you to the help docs on electricebikes.com. From there, you can find your user's manual. Once you've familiarized yourself with the information on each label and the manual, feel free to grab your side cutters and remove each yellow tag. Make sure to not remove your quick start guide as we'll go over that later. On the front of the bike, you'll find the quick start guide. You're gonna to wanna to read through the checklist and make sure you're familiar before you go on your first ride. After that, you can remove it and save it for future rides. At the front of the bike, you'll find one of the quick plugs is disconnected. This quick plug is for your display. It's disconnected to prevent power drain during the shipping process. To reconnect the plug, you're gonna to wanna to line up the arrows and press them straight together. You'll know it's fully connected when you no longer see the color from the inside. If you haven't already, you can remove the plastic covering from the display. Now let's adjust our display. For this, we're going to need a 3mm Allen wrench. We'll then loosen up our bolts that we can find on the bottom of the display. Once we loosen these up, set your display in a comfortable position and then tighten them You can then adjust your control pad. For this, we'll need a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. This is also gonna be found on the bottom side of the handlebars. You can loosen this, set it into a comfortable position, and then re-tighten just enough to be snug. Next, we'll ensure that your front wheel is straight. To do this, we'll do a visual inspection standing over the bike. If your wheel isn't straight, take your five millimeter Allen wrench and go down to the pinch bolts on the stem. Loosen these equally so that each one is free from the steer tube. Once free, you can step back over the frame and line up the wheel with the stem. Once straight, you can come back around with your five millimeter Allen wrench and tighten up your pinch bolts. Tighten to the recommended torque specs referenced in the user's manual. Next, we're gonna remove our battery. For this, we're gonna to wanna to locate our keys located up at the handlebars. For this, we can remove them with the side cutters by snipping the zip tie. Now that we have our keys, we can remove our battery. The key cylinder is gonna be located on the non-drive side of the battery up near the top. For this, you're gonna to wanna to rotate it clockwise and then apply pressure at the bottom of the battery to lift it up. After that, you can simply slide it out of the frame. Before your first ride, we're going to want to go through a few important safety steps to ensure that your bike is safe and ready to ride. First, we'll pump up the tires. When inflating your tires, you're going to want to reference the recommended PSI setting written on the side of your tires. The max inflation on these is 36 PSI. Today, we'll be inflating them to 30. You're going to want to find your valve, remove the cap, and then take your air pump insert it over the valve and close the clamp then we can turn it on and let it run now that our tires are inflated we can unclamp the pump, 
take our cap, put it back on, and then repeat this for the back rear tires. When inspecting your brakes for safety, first thing we're gonna wanna do is pull in the brake levers as far as we can. For this, we're gonna wanna make sure our levers aren't touching our hands or the bars themselves. At the same time, you're gonna wanna perform a rock test. If there's any movement at all, you may need to do a brake adjustment. Since your XP trike doesn't come with a kickstand, we've installed parking brakes on both front and rear. This is gonna help keep your bike still while you're away from your bike. To activate your parking brake, you'll simply pull in the brake lever and then using your index finger, you'll pull the parking brake lever, locking it into place. To disengage the parking brake, you'll simply pull in your brake lever again, disengaging the parking brake lever, allowing you to freely move again. We recommend cleaning off your rotors in case of any debris or contaminants that might have gotten on them during the shipping process. For this, we'll need some isopropyl alcohol and a clean rag. You'll just want to dab some alcohol onto your rag and spin the rotor. For our final safety check, we're going to want to ensure our axles are tightened to the proper torque spec. For the front, We'll start by removing our nut covers and then taking our 15 millimeter wrench and torquing them to spec. For the rear wheels, we'll start by taking off the dust cover, exposing our eight millimeter bolt. For this, we'll take our eight millimeter Allen wrench and torque it to spec. You'll then repeat this on the opposite wheel. Next, take a seat on your bike to ensure that the saddle is at a comfortable angle. If your saddle isn't comfortable while seated, take your 14 millimeter wrench to the bolt on the bottom of the saddle. Loosen this. until you can adjust the angle of your saddle. Once it's at the desired angle, re-tighten it. And check the comfort. To start charging your battery, you'll first take your charger, unbox it, and plug everything in accordingly. Next, you'll take the charger, find the charge port on the side of your battery by lifting up the dust cover and inserting the charger into the battery. Now note, it's important to plug in the charger to the battery before plugging it into the wall. Before plugging in the charger to the wall, the charger will not display any light. Once plugged into the wall, it will display a red light until the battery becomes fully charged. Then it will show green. The battery will arrive 50 to 75% charged. We recommend charging your battery fully before your first ride. For the seat post, you'll want to ensure that it's inserted past the minimum insertion point. We're also going to want to ensure that our stem is inserted past its minimum insertion point. Next, we're going to check the quick release clamp on our seat post. This is just to ensure that it won't slip down while we're riding. To tighten the quick release clamp, you're gonna to wanna to open up the lever, tighten the bolt by rotating it clockwise, and then closing down the lever. You'll know it's at the proper tension when it leaves an imprint on your hand. You'll then wanna repeat this process for the handlebar stem. Next, we're gonna to wanna to do a pull test on our stem latch. For this, we're gonna to wanna to pull against the latch without activating the trigger on the back side. If it comes unfolded, you'll wanna contact our customer support team. You'll wanna repeat the process down at the frame latch. If this comes loose, you'll wanna contact our customer support team. 
Next, you'll want to do a visual inspection of your bike. If you find anything off or out of the ordinary, feel free to contact our customer support team. Now that we've done that, we can grab our fully charged battery and reinstall it into the bike. For this, we'll want to line up the terminals, unlock our battery by rotating the cylinder clockwise, and then pressing down until fully seated. Then we can remove our keys and go over the electronics. First, we'll start by turning on our battery and then moving to our display. To turn on the bike, we'll start by hitting the power button on the control pad. Once the display is on and active, it'll show us several different data fields. Up top, it'll show us an energy bar showing our estimated battery life. Below that, it'll show us our current speed. Underneath that, our current PES level. And then on the bottom, there'll be five different data fields that we can cycle through via the power button. You can also access the back end settings of the bike via the control pad. This will be done by pressing in the plus and the minus button at the same time. For more information on these settings, reference your user's manual found online at electricebikes.com. You can also adjust your PAS level via the plus and the minus button on your control pad. To turn on your lights, you can also press and hold the plus button until the light icon has appeared on your display. To turn it off, do the same. Your trike is also equipped with brake lights. When the lever is pulled, it'll illuminate the lights in the rear. Your XB trike is also equipped with a twist throttle. However, this will not be active unless you are in pedal assist one through five. All of Electric's bikes come with five standard levels of pedal assist. The pedal assist will activate if the display is set to level one through five and the crank arms begin to rotate. The motor will turn on and help you while you pedal to maybe get up a hill or make pedaling a little bit easier when you need it. The X-Peak trike features a new PWR system. Each pedal assist level is now regulated by wattage and speed. This new system applies to both pedal and throttle experiences. When the trike arrives, it will begin in beginner mode. In pedal assist one, there's the least amount of wattage. While riding in pedal assist one, you will feel a light onset of power for more controlled takeoffs. In pedal assist five, there's the full amount of wattage. While riding in pedal assist five, you'll feel a strong onset of power with full torque for a fast and intense experience. When you are in pedal assist one on the beginner mode, your bike will get two amps and your speed will be capped at five miles an hour. On pedal assist two, you will get five amps and also be capped at five miles an hour. On pedal assist three, you'll get nine amps of assistance capped at 12 miles an hour. On pedal assist four, you'll get 14 amps of assistance and a max speed of 12 miles an hour. And at PAS five, you'll get 20 amps of assistance with a max speed of 12 miles an hour. If you'd like to unlock your bike to 14 miles an hour, reference your user's manual. Now that our bike is unboxed, set up, and turned on, we can go for our first ride. Now that we're outside, let's move into sizing your trike. First, starting with the seat, we'll loosen up our collar and bring our saddle right below our hip. Once that's set, you're going to want to lock that into place, keeping your seat post below the minimum insertion. Moving up to the handlebars, it's the same process, but for this, you're just going to want to put them wherever you feel comfortable. Once again, underneath the minimum insertion. Now that our trike's all sized up, we can move to mounting it. When riding any of our bikes, we do recommend that you wear a helmet. When getting on our trike, we recommend that you pull in both brakes, swing your leg over the frame, and then step off of the front pedal onto the saddle. Now we're ready to ride. We always recommend starting out your ride in pedal assist zero. Once you're comfortable with your trike, feel free to move up into any of the other five PAS modes. Let's go ride. Once you feel more comfortable with how your trike handles, feel free to cycle through the rest of your PES modes.
Your trike comes out of box in beginner mode, capping your speed at 12 miles an hour. Once you feel more comfortable, you can disengage beginner mode, allowing you to go 14 miles an hour. Use caution though when going around corners at higher speeds, as your trike tends to become unstable. Thanks for riding with us today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service department.